to where you're able to sell your offer consistently, but without an excessive amount of stress, without being stuck on content creation all day, every day, or just burning yourself out. Uh, oh, am I, I just want to double check. I'm showing you the right screen. Okay, cool. Does everyone see a screen that says the reverse service funnel? I just want to double check. All systems go. You're seeing that? Cool. And maybe I'll put the chat box here so I can still kind of see it too. So let's get into it. Is this, is learning this information for you? Well, I don't know. I don't know where everyone is at in, in their phase, <laughs> but basically, yes, if you don't have a ginormous following on Instagram, and if you don't want to have to post all of the time. <laughs> and maybe you feel icky at the idea of cold messaging people. You know, I'm sure you've received a lot of those cold messages like, hey, thanks for being my friend. Can I sell you something? Can I sell you something? Have you tried this weight loss pill? You know, it's it, it's an icky energy and you don't want to do that, do you? And you don't want to spend many thousands per month on paid ads to get new people aware of what you have to sell. And that's the thing. These days, to really gain traction with paid advertising, you, you need to look at it as minimum thousands per month. Um, and, and if you're looking at hiring someone to do that for you, their, their fees are normally three, $4,000 a month just to run your ad budget. And then that's a different thing altogether. So we're going to bypass all of that because all of that is not needed because there's 7 billion people on the planet and you only need a handful of people to run a six-figure coaching business. That's the beauty of it right? It's not a saturated market. There's only more people wanting the specificity of what a coach has to offer over that of a classical, let's say, psychologist. And there's nothing wrong with psychologists, but more people are wanting a specificity and a deeper level of resonance with who they're gaining support from. So is this reverse funnel sequence for you? Yes, if you have an untapped vision beckoning you forth, to be released in a greater way. And yes, if you want greater levels of financial security and stability, right? You, you guys, I have a Taurus in my moon. I'm a double Leo, but my moon is in Taurus. That's what I meant to say. And that means I'm actually very much hardwired to create my life on stability, right? So my business model is based around what offers stability and financial security. Yes, the Leo gives the passion and the fire, but stability is important. And that's what you're going to be learning in today's class. It's really a systematic approach that you can rely on so that you can feel grounded. It's not like, oh, will, will it work? I hope like there's no hope in my business model. There's expectation and a fucking plan. That's how it works. Right. And that's what you're going to be learning today to really shift you into the energy of expectation. I I know what's coming, right? I'm planning for it. What am I doing this season? What am I doing that season? So this class isn't for you if you're already over the 150K per year mark in your coaching business. If you are awesome, <laughs> but you don't need to know this because because that means you already do know this. And it's not for you if you already have an assortment of signature offers to those ideal clients throughout the year. And it's also not for you if you already have an ideal lifestyle on your terms. Now, here's the thing. Some of you I know you, you already do have the ideal lifestyle on your terms. So cool. We're just going to add in these other pieces of the puzzle to truly thrive in all aspects of life. So this class is especially for you if you've started your coaching business and you've had some success, but you're like, you know what? I know it's available. It's available for me. I'm really, I'm really ready to solidify my six figure year business model. And that term is thrown around so much six figure this seven figure that but that's the reality of it you know six figures actually isn't that much if you have certain goals and desires for how you live your lifestyle and so why not have that if it's available so it's also for you if you're thinking your current brand is ready to be kicked up a notch or maybe 12 <laughs> and really ready to unleash your boldest work to the world and take back your time implementing level of strategy. Sometimes visionary women will feel like, no, I don't want strategy. I don't want planning. That feels restrictive. I just want to be like airy fairy. But I find that when we bring forth that level of grounded strategy to the visionary airy fairy mind, which trust me, I have, you know, it, it actually is supportive and it removes angst and anxiety and worry and fear because we have something we can trust. And this is when we talk about knowing when to turn on the gas and for how long. That's what frees someone from having to be a content 
factory because you know you aren't actually trying to sell something every single week of the year, every single day of the year, you know that there's phases, right? And, and I'll explain more of that as we continue today's class. So over the next 60 minutes, you're going to learn three things. And I channeled this, con well, I actually literally just made this class today and yesterday. And yesterday I channeled like the concept pierced through at a, at a deeper level. It was like, oh, you know what? I'm going to narrow it down for them. I'm going to tell them if you had to only do three things, if you were only allowed to do three things and someone like was like, no, anything beyond that four or five can't do, what would be the three things? Those are going to be the things that you learn today. It's the hierarchy, the top priorities and realizing everything else is fluff. It can help, but it's not necessary. And it doesn't necessarily tip the needle in your business model. And that's my approach. What is going to tip the needle? What actually generates the outcome of a prosperous business model. And a lot of this is going to sound like strategy, but the basis of it is you get to lead always from your heart with integrity. You aren't going to be an icky sticky sales car person. You're going to be a lighthouse, a leader, a visionary. You're going to learn the art of taking a prospective client who's on the outer circle of your awareness or their awareness and move them from cold to warm to hot ready to trot ready and excited to invest no arm twisting but but ready to take that action if you're hearing weird scratches in the background my pomeranian's going crazy behind me <laughs> what a psycho okay he senses i'm giving energy elsewhere so you guys without this support you could be susceptible to the same kinds of limitations and problems again and again or feel like, man, like these other coaches, they're starting after I started and they're flying past me with more success. What gives, you know, or just feeling like, you know what, I have this vision and I, it's never gotten yet to the place I know it's possible. And the other thing is you want to avoid falling into the trap of doing an expensive program based on like the shiny object syndrome but realizing it only works for a few, not most, and not necessarily for your unique energy type. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, one strategy isn't going to work for everyone. It has to feel aligned to the truth of who you are. And that's why you'll see some programs. It's like, well, how did they make that? And they made nothing. It's like, was that an aligned approach for that particular person? So Stay until the very end because I'm going to be giving away one free gift, actually technically two. And also for those of you who are interested, I already planted a seed about this uh, via email if you caught the email, but I'm doing a little microdose. <laughs> had fun with my little graphic there, giving you a microdose about what May's VIP business accelerator is all about for those who are curious. So a lot of you, I know some of you, especially those who are going to be on the replay, from Europe, we're just meeting. So I'm going to give you the Coles Notes version. Bear with me, ladies who already know, especially my private clients on the call. So Coles Notes version, I'm the kind of woman who was rushing to get to the next step in life. I think a lot of women grow up that way, feeling like I just got to get to this point and this point. So I call it the white picket fence syndrome, you know, and the thing is, I was chasing these societal norms, thinking that's what will bring me success or safety or security or be where I'm supposed to be. And I learned a, a hard dose of reality this summer. I turned 29 when my white, white picket fence came crashing down. I call it my rock bottom moment. <laughs> and it, it was really an opportunity to, to awaken to the fact that my life was meant to go a different direction, a direction that I most certainly was not heading. And I needed that abrupt wake up call. Drop a comment if you've had the abrupt wake up call or even even a moderate wake up call, something that said the path I'm going no longer aligns with who I've grown into and it's not for me and it doesn't feel good anymore. So I'm going to pivot and go this way. I know some of you most certainly have had that happen. So what happened in my upbringing sounds difficult, but honestly, it was all for me and not to me. So it started off with a very, very poor upbringing. And I bring that up because we're going to be talking about money later and often how when we grow up one way, we think certain levels of money aren't available for us. But I want to assure you, I grew up extremely poor. I ended up not living with either parent by the time I was a teenager when I was placed with another family for high school. And when I was living with that family, I worked at Boston Pizza. I washed dishes. 
every weekend and I saved up money and I moved out into my very first apartment when I was 17. And I said to myself, I'm going to make something with myself. I'm going to go out there and be successful. But I didn't know the concept of entrepreneurship. I just knew, oh, I think I'm supposed to go to university. So I went that route. I landed with a energy draining corporate career. It was, it was around helping people as a primary therapist and exercise therapist. But the reality is I ended up pushing paper for an insurance company. And in doing that for so long, I developed chronic pain over the nine years I was there. And I just realized I was really not satisfied with the life I had rushed so fast to create. And I ended up getting divorced or married by 28, divorced by 29. I lost my home. I had so many friendships fade away. The, the night of my 29th birthday, I actually got blackout drunk, um, fell down my staircase, lost consciousness, fractured my skull, got a traumatic brain injury, lost my sense of smell. And that was really that rock bottom that made me question, where am I going? And is the approach I'm having in life serving me in any way? And the answer was absolutely not. It also was the wake up call for me to realize I developed an alcohol addiction, just like the family tree ahead of me. And I don't look the part to be an alcoholic. And that's why it was very hard for me to even accept this could be the truth. So in essence, my life was um, dismantling itself and rearranging itself. You can see I was in a much different frequency in my 20s, exhausted, depleted. When I was 25, I, I look completely different than I do now at 37. And so much of it was yes, being in a lower frequency, trapped in negative patterns, but I really didn't know the power of my mind. I didn't understand law of attraction. I didn't know that I was the creator of all of it, that I was the designer of my entire life experience. But the, the spiritual awakening helped open my eyes to such an amazing thing. Sometimes it's a scary thing. What? It's really me creating all of it? <laughs> but for the most part, it's an amazing thing. So how did things really pivot from a really hard place to a really beneficial place is I made a commitment, radical self-love, learning about mindset, belief systems, learning about boundaries for the first time, deconstructing my life from outside influences that weren't supporting me or serving me. You know, drop a comment if you've gone through this phase of realizing certain people aren't a match for you anymore. Maybe certain friendships you've outgrown or career paths you've outgrown. And I know for me, this really helped me like clear the cl clutter and discover my most authentic self along the way, start setting larger containers of possibility, you know, what is available for me versus what I thought was just in the cards for me. So in, in this path, I started to invest in specialized education, following people doing things that I was like, that sounds amazing. What if I did something like that? And in doing so, I grew my confidence and I started dreaming bigger. And dreaming bigger resulted in, you know what, I'm going to build and launch my own skincare company, Body Cherish. Some of you are Body Cherish customers. Thank you so much. So that started in 2015. And then I got drawn to the energy healing side of things, 2016. And then I, I worked up the courage and I said, fuck it, I'm going all the way with this. And I quit my corporate job March 30th, 2017. And I've been doing the mentoring and the courses and programs ever since. And what that provided me is freedom like I, I could have never imagined in the old paradigm I was living. This is a photo. I was less than a year after quitting that corporate job. I was like, screw it. I work for myself. I don't have to check in with my boss. I'm going to just keep working, but fly to Asia and work. And so I started doing things that were never a possibility in my old paradigm of the kind of life experience a girl like me was capable of having, right? And yes, there's you know, fun, amazing things like traveling, but working for myself as an online coach, it's freedom in my family life. I eventually met my husband, got pregnant, had my daughter, Nevaeh. If you can hear her crying, she's fussing right now, going down to bed with her dad. But it's not just about this like lavish travel lifestyle, having successful coaching business. It's about the freedom in your home life, in your family life, where you have values of how you want to spend your time and with who, right? So to give you some stats of what online coaching has provided me, this level of freedom, sometimes we have the impression we have to slave away for year after year after year after year to get to a point where we could generate a certain amount of money. But the truth is, if you do the right steps right out of the gate, you can have results fast. So just sharing a printout from my store in 25 months, I crossed the $200,000 mark. And 
in uh, the last four and a half years, the $500,000 mark, a half a year there, I was on maternity leave, so I didn't include that in. But I'm sharing not to brag, but lead by example. It's, if it's available for me, a girl who grew up extremely poor, it's available for everyone and anyone. And you can, in fact, manifest big outcomes fast. You don't have to wait years and years and years. It's a matter of decision. Do I think I, that that's available for me, right? So despite these successes, yes, I just gave the financial breakdown. I, I do want to highlight there was many, many challenges that I had to learn from the last five years of being in this industry. So one of them is I have spent thousands on trying ads. And I'll tell you right now, I've never signed a client from an ad, but I've tried them, right? And they were difficult and hard and frustrating. And I banged my head against my laptop and I cried tears, I'm sure. And overall, I can tell you, I did waste a lot of time on doing a lot of unnecessary things. I don't regret it. I learned from it. I learned what to not do next time. And there was a phase where I thought more followers meant more profits. But I'll tell you right now, popularity doesn't equal profitability at all, right? I know people who have a few hundred, like, like maybe two to 300 followers on Instagram and make a beautiful income because you don't even need two to 300 clients, just a handful of the right people, that's all you need. And so that's what you're going to be learning about later in this class. And also I'll be transparent with you guys. I haven't shared this in a masterclass before, but I have spent money, a lot of money on coaches and programs, but I've also invested in coaches who I felt mm, disappointed that once working with them, they knew less than me, or they struggled with the client fulfillment, leading me to develop um, at least for a phase, lack of trust in mentors, you know, feeling like, what if that happens again? What if she drops the ball, my next mentor, et cetera? I mean, maybe some of you have had that experience with a mentor because we're always encouraged to invest in ourselves, invest in ourselves. But what if we do it one time and we're like, shit, that didn't feel good what happened, right? So I love finding patterns. I love looking for, for, Stat statistics that can illuminate the path forward. So when I look at the last few launches I've done, I can see that for the most part, I've always been in this multiple five figure launch range. But what's cool is throughout the years, I mean, this isn't the last five years, this is the last maybe two years, the, these stats, it went from a few weeks to fill my roster to seven days to three days to two days. And my most recent one, I literally didn't even announce it or launch it. It just, it just happened behind the scenes. And why this feels so good to someone with my energy type is I don't like selling often. I don't have the energy and capacity to, and after a certain amount of time, it does make me feel icky, sticky, weird. <laughs> so I don't want to feel that way because that's not a good energy to be in. So there's some people, they will literally sell at the end of every post or at the end of every email. And I'm telling you, you don't have to do that in order to be successful. You can literally design your coaching model around what works for you. So all of that said, without further ado, let's get into what the reverse service funnel sequence is. I'm just gonna look at the chat box instead. Oh, oh, ah, shucks. I can't tell who wrote that because it says Christine Arnott said that. <laughs> Maybe if you guys chat, be like, oh, in brackets, so-and-so. Cool, okay. So we're going to go through three top priorities. Top priority number one, some of you already know, some of you already done, have done, but let's just remind you, <laughs> you got to create your own signature masterpiece. You can call it signature program. You could call it your coaching offer, but it's your signature way of providing a transformation to your client. And a classic telltale sign of a new coach, an aspiring coach who doesn't have the right education is thinking, well, because I got this certification that says I'm certified to be a coach, people will just hire me. And they, they're, they're kind of like graduated out of these programs where they're under this archaic model of just like charging by like a package of sessions. And that does not work. That is archaic, you guys. I can't stress enough how many people who've come into my programs who have 10K in debt from getting their certification and no concept how to launch a program 
no concept how to build their own program and then how to fill their own program because it's very cut and paste the model they they learn which is offer packages of three or five or ten and it really doesn't elicit the same level of transformation because you're not able to put your unique magic your unique spin on it so where resistant comes up on making your own signature offering is thinking well Maybe I don't have enough wisdom. Maybe I'm not far along enough in my journey to actually elicit a certain transformation for someone else. So fear and ego will say, I'm not ready to do that. That feels overwhelming. So I'll just put out a little offer here and see what happens. But when we do that, the results fall flat. And then we're only more discouraged of doing something bigger because of those results. But those results are not indicative of what would happen if you did the signature program. So think about your own life experience, how you have transformed or grown in your own unique way, what you've been through, you know, whether you're, you're maybe best suited to work with people doing a career pivot or midlife crisis or navigating motherhood or relationship dynamics, nutrition, health, self-love, empowerment, finding your purpose. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. What have you been through that you are simply a few steps ahead of your ideal client? So it's really realizing like, what are her pain points? What were my pain points? And how can I provide her through my wisdom and expertise, a solution focused outcome, right? So often a uh, aspiring coach or an established coach will be this, there'll be like this urge to pinball from offer this, offer that, oh, that flops, that didn't really work well. I'll try this, I'll try that. And what happens with that is you are not giving your audience or your offer time to build traction, to gain notoriety, to have this snowball effect, right? You're, it, it's, it's a classic symptom of someone who isn't necessarily in this for the long game, but wants the short game, quick gratification. So I'm going to elaborate this a little bit more. It's like, can you devote yourself fully to the development of your launch of your signature offering so that it has a chance to go from seed to, to like actually blooming? And this is what I say, like, think of it as a seed, water it, give it sunshine, give it adequate time to grow before being like, oh, only one person bought it or no one did. Oh, you know what? So, so I'm just going to like move my water and can and go a new offer. I'll try this. Oh, that didn't really work. Uh, I'll try this. Oh, you know, it's my price. I'll make my price cheaper and then I'll sell. Things don't sell because of lack of desire, not because of the price point. A woman isn't going to spend money on something she doesn't desire just because it's $50. She has to desire it, want it bad, whether it's $50 or $5,000. You guys, this is fact. Like, would you ever be like, well, I mean, I, I kind of want it. So, you know, because it's on sale from 5,000 to 50, I'll buy it. No, you still wouldn't buy it because you don't desire it. So often the problem isn't that the signature program wasn't adequate to sell. The problem was there wasn't an adequate, adequate energetic lead up in the launch phase. And you're going to be learning about that in a subsequent priority, because when that's done right, the offer will sell because the desire was built, right? Does this make sense? Have you maybe, or maybe you know someone had that pattern of like, okay, I'll, I'll try this then. Or, you know what, the price must have been too big. I'll lower it. I'll lower it. And then, and then I trust that it will sell when that's not how it works. So if you're watching this and you've already built your signature program and had some success, awesome. The next step for you would be, how can I upgrade and elevate my signature program, make it a more premium experience, or maybe um, elevate it to a group model where I work with four women at once rather than one-on-one, -on -one, right? So when, when you're thinking like, okay, what could I put into my signature program? Well, think about where is your highest excitement about things right now? Where is your competence? Where do you feel inspired to talk and teach and share about, right? Is it helping women uncover their own confidence? Is it that like mm, ability to be that like uninhibited real raw you is it uh, your own journey like learning feminine energy and like sexuality and, and you want to talk about that right there's no right or wrong answer 
It's just what is feeling aligned right now for you, knowing what worked in the past may not work for you anymore if you've simply grown out of that, meaning you're no longer passionate about it. It doesn't mean it's wrong or bad. It just means that you're being guided to do something different, right? That was the case for me when I decided to um, formally end one of my signature programs that I did for eight seasons. I think two of you who I saw have done that program in any case. So with this priority, number one, building your signature experience, your signature coaching package, you can call it a container package program, whatever you want. It, it allows you to build momentum where the momentum is built on not just you talking about it, but the testimonials that start to accumulate over time. And what happens is when you learn the art of setting up formal launch and enrollment periods is you start developing hype and excitement in each launch period. So some people will go through your service funnel, your sales funnel, your launch for your program. Let's say your program is called Awaken Your Life. Okay, they might love it. Oh, it's so good, but it might not be the right time for them that time. So they might be like, oh, when it comes back next year or next season, I, I'm saving money. I'm putting it aside. I'm definitely going to do it. So it helps your prospect associate you with that thing, that thing that takes them from their issue to their solution because there's consistency. There's that thing again she's selling. Oh, okay, it's not a flash in the pan and she's onto something different. So this is why I say to make it in this industry that doesn't have a high success rate at all, you know, it, it's something like 80% of people who try to be a coach never exceed 20K a year. So that's not a very motivating stat. And I think it's because there's an allure, hey, get rich quick. This is an easy thing to do where it's actually something you have to be devoted to do because you're, you truly want to be of service in this unique way. It has to feel purposeful and not like a flash in the pan to you, like uh, maybe a side hobby, right? I'll be real with you. I don't work with women who view it as a like little side hobby because I know they'll, they'll never get results because it's got to be from devotion. It's your purpose beckoning you forth. And from that place, your results will blow your mind, right? I know that sounds harsh, but I think that's the reality of the situation. So creating your signature program, you got to give yourself permission to break the mold and be willing to do something different and unique and not overanalyze. Is she doing it? Is he doing that? Will they think it's weird? Well, whoever thinks it's weird isn't your right client anyways. The people who will be drawn to it will be like, where has something like this been all my life, right? <laughs> Like I know one of you on this call, Shannon, like you can channel the angels. Like how cool is something like that intermixed inside a program, right? You probably have it intermixed in your program. An example of this is way back when I launched Elevate Your Life in 2017, I included distance Reiki or for clients who live local in-person Reiki because I loved Reiki and I included angel card readings because I loved angel card readings. So some people would have thought that was woo woo, but for me, it was like, I love it. So the right people will love it and be attracted to it, right? So permission granted. Um, another thing to keep in mind is package your life experience and your own transformation. So if you're thinking, well, Christine, I don't even have a certification. You don't need a certification more than anything. If you have one, great. If that builds your confidence, awesome. But more than anything, what you need is experience navigating through something, some phase of life that you know you'll be able to stand with strong presence, support, and guidance for someone navigating a similar journey, right? And it doesn't mean you have to be perfect and completely like mastered that thing, you know, but it does mean you have to have a certain level of growth through it and a certain level of self-awareness about it. Like, let's say mm, I've worked with women who are kind of in the realm of self-love or even like body image who've overcome eating disorders. And while they've overcome an eating disorder, she's been like, I sometimes do get down on myself for my size here and there. And it's like, does that mean I can't be a coach anymore? Absolutely not. You can still be a coach. You have self-awareness that you always want to pivot toward greater levels of self-love, right? Does that make sense? You guys, we don't have to be perfect. So how do you establish yourself as the best coach suited to work with certain people when there are a lot of people offering these services? It's that we really want 
you to be associated like in their mind they're they're somehow piecing you together like you're the person to work with for this thing so so how do we do that well the standalone coaching with no package or program included it it doesn't it doesn't support that association right and what happens is uh, it sometimes will attract uh, people trapped in a level of scarcity of like, I don't want to invest in an experience. I just want like one session here and take as much as I can learn and then be off on my way. And they aren't going to get results that way. And obviously the investment price is a heck of a lot different. So when you build this signature offering, it allows you to be what we call top of mind. If you guys know Gary B, he talks a lot about this. So it allows you to be top of mind when the prospective is thinking, huh, you know what, I want to, I want to enter a program. I want to, I want to join a da, 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 da. like, how are they going to associate you with that? So we're going to get to that in a moment here. I want to give you some examples of how these signature programs work from my real life business example. So I made a program called Elevate Your Life. It helps you basically raise your vibration, become an energetic match to your deepest desires, uncover your purpose, and that foundational first step of what would be my inspired career path. So kind of like the starting point. And it ran from 2017 to 2020. And I want to let you know, I, I really devoted myself to this program, um, learning how to launch it better every time, learning how to add more to it over the years. I tweaked the business model. I eventually made it a group program, but I, I focused on that and I didn't launch my second signature offer until January, 2018. Do you have to wait that long to launch a different offer? No, but I, it just shows you like, this is evidence. Like I didn't pin, pinball from thing to thing to thing. Even when there was a flop, cause there was a flop in that period. I still came back with devotion and learned from mistakes and showed up again. Right. And that allowed me to right out of the gate, go to the six figure per year mark. Conscious Leadership Rising was another big pivot. In 2020, I launched it and it's a high-level business mastermind. Right now it's running in its third season. So now you see this is this is a new signature program that I that I now have like a season where it's launched, where I get to expect when I'm opening enrollment, when I'm closing enrollment. And then my third one is Quantum Catalyst. This this one just launched this year, and this might sound like, whoa, that sounds like a lot of different things going on, but it isn't. It actually just means right now I have two signature programs going on at different enrollment periods. And, um, and that means literally selling twice a year. And if I want to, I can open up like a second enrollment for each year, but it's going to be depending on, do I have energy and stamina for it? One of you is in quantum catalyst right now. I'm so happy you're here on the call. <laughs> so here's an example. Sometimes your brain needs to see the numbers to like ingest it and also get excited and see the world is changing. How we make money is changing and it doesn't have to be exchanged by the hour for this level of abundance. So let's say you are a brand new aspiring coach. You're, you're just getting started. Okay. So a very normal price for a, like, like a not advanced program would be a $4,000 price range. So let's say you're running a program for three to four months, your signature system, you enroll five women, totally reasonable. There's 7 billion people on the planet. Let's say you did that winter, summer, and autumn, like January, summer, and autumn, three times a year. Let's say I have the stamina, I'm going to launch it three times a year. Well, that is a $60,000 a year. So let's say to all of the clients who graduate from that, you uh, upgrade them, not all of the clients, let's say to six out of the 15 clients, they, they graduate and they keep working with you for 5,000 each. Okay, so now we're doing another $30,000 a year. With the self-studies, a lot of new coaches go first to self-studies. Self-studies, I got to tell you guys, they are just as much effort and energy to sell as a $5,000 program. So it's like if, if someone needs just as much marketing and trust no like development and, and like all of the things to buy a self-study for 200. Why don't you put that energy into selling your signature program if, if it's literally going to be the same amount of energy? So it would be realistic to sell, you know, a handful of these a year. So I, I put a thousand dollars there. So that's a 91k year. Pretty amazing. So who sees that and thinks, oh my God, that's amazing. Like drop a one. Who sees that and thinks, oh, that's totally impossible. That can't happen. Drop a two. 
Okay, so let's say you are an established coach. I can't see who is all on the call right now. I know a couple of you who signed up are established. So you get to set a larger container of possibility. So your current program, you're elevating, maybe you're shifting its price point, or maybe you're, you're doing a better job on the, the, the second thing you're going to learn here, which is the energetic lead up. So now your signature program is 7K each. Okay, three times a year, 35K launch, that's a 70, wait, I did the math wrong. <laughs> okay, let's say, okay, let's back pedal. Let's say you, you launch it just twice a year, not three times a year. That's a $70,000 a year. Let's say you're at a phase of developing your second program, your second offer, and it's a higher level program. Let's say you're in the realm of business coaching and you price it at 10K, super reasonable for business coaching. You launch it just two times a year, 50K each launch, five times 10 women, that's $100,000. And again, let's throw on $1,000 of self-studies. So that's $171,000 a year and only um, two launches here and two launches here because that meant I meant to say two there. So drop a comment if that sounds, drop a one if that sounds amazing. And drop a two if you think, again, no, that's far-fetched. That's impossible. I'm going to see what the chat box says. Oh, so good. I'm so happy that the, they're saying ones. I can't tell who's saying other ones because it again says my name, but that makes me so excited. <laughs> you guys, you know what I love? I love being in groups and containers where people are challenging my beliefs of what's normal and what's available. So I'm in a mastermind where I'm the little fish, the other women in it, very normal that they make a hundred K a month. And I love that because you know what it tells me when I hear things that aren't in my realm of normal and my friend group, it tells me, oh, cool. I'm hearing this. This is even in my awareness because I'm an energetic match to it. Because if I wasn't, I couldn't even be aware of this happening for my peers in my mastermind. So you guys hearing this information being like, yeah, that's fucking awesome. Like take it as a little like pat on the back from the universe being like, yeah, girl, you're an energetic match to this. Cause when you see it, you aren't triggered and like, no, no, no. You're just like, yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Why not? Why not for me? Right. Isn't that cool to think of it that way? When we see something, it can trigger us. Or like my mentor says, it can activate us and be like, why not me? <laughs> you know? Cool. Okay. So, okay. How do we be top of mind? Top of mind is like that association working with her for that thing. So top of mind is most certainly cultivated through trust, no like. You may have heard this before. This is a very common phrase in marketing is how can you cultivate people trusting you, feeling like they know you and liking you. If you launched your coaching business in 2015, you didn't need trust, no like. All you needed was no. <laughs> All you needed was like people are aware that you have knowledge that they benefit from. That's it. But with the volume of people offering services, people need to feel resonance that you're the one they want to learn the thing from. A hundred people can teach the thing. Why do they want you to be the one? Resonance. So that's where trusting and liking comes in. And it doesn't have to be like a split, like 33% for each. They might only need to like you a little bit. <laughs> or they may, they, it just like there's somehow this assortment. So. One way to cultivate this is, okay, again, 2015, 16, 2017, social media was like show and tell, treating them like you're the, they're your audience. You're speaking at them. You're showing them. They're telling, you're telling them what you need to know. Ew, people don't want that anymore. People want you to create connection with them, social media back and forth. So rather than feeling like it's kind of an all about you show, and I'm speaking on behalf of myself because I went through a phase of this of like, it's all about like, what am I posting, sharing and like very aware of like me, me, me. And it's like, no, like there needs to be energy and attention put back out on your community, right? So yes, this is going to be done through visibility, but not visibility in a way that's going to burn you out because it's just seasons of when to turn on the gas and when to take the foot off. But this is also going to be done through what you're teaching on. So ask yourself, are you only showing up and teaching facts? Like, let's say you help women with self-care or holistic health or something, and you're only teaching about like 
do this in the morning, drink lemon water, take these supplements. Okay, great. Where's resonance though? So this is where, can you trickle an assortment of things with more sustenance for her? Something that gives a greater sense of relatability and vulnerability. So let's say you talk about when you were lethargic and drained on energy and couldn't get out of bed in bed in the morning. And then you can transition to some of your your more like wisdom based knowledge things, but they need to feel resonance with it. And that's why the art of storytelling is so powerful because it's how people remember you connect with you. Somehow you stay in their memory bank and, and now you're top of mind so that maybe clients can actually be warmed up and turn into, Oh my God, I need to find a way to work with you kind of clients. Right. Is this making sense? So brainstorm, you can write this down on a piece of paper and come back to it later. What are you most excited to teach and talk about? What are things that you could trickle into your social media presence? Pauline, we would have talked about this on the quantum catalyst call literally last Saturday, but like, what are things you can trickle in that are more than just the thing that you teach about, right? What is going on behind the scenes that give them a glimpse into your life that they're like, Ooh, like the way she lives and leads her life. Interesting. Interesting. You know what? I like what this woman's about, you know? So those weird things about you are actually what your prospective client likely needs to see and hear about. Women are, we, we are emotional creatures. You know, we want to, we, we want to buy on feeling, not just thing. Men are more like, okay, tell me what it does. <laughs> then, then I'm good. So we want to ask ourselves, how can we create connection? How can we create impact? Like, when we post something, share something, say something, how do we want them? How do we want them to be left feeling inspired, motivated, seen, celebrated, supported, not alone? Like, what are those kinds of feelings? And you guys, like I said it before, I'll say it again. It's not about how many likes or follows you get. You know, if you're in this business for popularity, you were in the wrong business. My popularity on Instagram went down and down and down and down when I started speaking my truth on a topic that was near and dear to my heart this past winter. And it, and even though my numbers went down and down and down, my business only went up and up and up because the people who were never going to be a client of mine anyways left. And the people who didn't really understand me at a deeper way were like, oh, thank you for saying that. And they came closer and closer, right? So don't worry about unsubscribes. Don't worry about unfollows. Don't worry about who doesn't like you. The, and that's why being an entrepreneur is one of the most soul growth accelerating journeys. Cause you're going to be faced with all those insecurities. Like I remember in my early days when I'd see like how many people will unsubscribe from an email when I sent out and I'd feel hurt. Oh, they don't like me. And then there's that narrative. Girls don't like me. Da, 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 da. And it's like, but I'm not do, like, am I doing this just to feel liked and popular? The answer is no, this is an extension, an aspect of my soul purpose. Ask yourself, is it for pop, 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 blah, blah. is it for popularity or is it an extension of your sole purpose? Being a coach isn't your only sole purpose. It's an extension of how you serve your sole mission. There's other ways you do it too. How, what kind of friend you are, what kind of mom you are, what kind of neighbor you are, how much you learn to love yourself. I mean, there's so many things. It's just a part of it. So some tips, your ideal customer is always you a little bit ago. Other thing, quit self-obsessing. Did anyone like my post yet? Did anyone comment? She said something not nice. <laughs> no, like, let's forget about that. That's lower frequency. Let's just create content, trust it's from alignment, forget about it. Maybe come back to it a couple hours later to reply to some comments if there are some. Taking action creates clarity and confidence. Sometimes where we get stuck is we say, well, I don't really know what to do. I'm not like, ah, like, what am I even about? What am I talking on? Who am I for? Well, that will illuminate itself for you as you take the muddled, mucky, murky, I'm not sure action, because you're going to get a feedback loop that says, ooh, that felt good. Do more of that. Or you know what? I actually didn't like how that felt. I'm not going to do more of that. So permission granted to take action for the clarity to come and trust it will come. And part of that means you got to put your blinders on. You got to put your blinders on. As soon as you take your eyes onto what someone else is going to do, 
it's not going to inspire you. Usually it's going to make you feel you're not doing enough or adequate in some way or question your inspired idea. Nothing is going to be more successful than you taking action from alignment. So if watching what other people are doing causes you to take action from alignment, great. But usually it causes you to feel in like, I don't know, typically the feeling is not enough in some shape or form or thinking like, oh, you need a branding shoot that looks like hers, or you need to talk about this because that's what the cool kids are doing. And no, 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 you only just need to honor your inner being, your wise guide inside. Isn't that liberating? You have all the wisdom and answer and the like the compass is inside of you, right? So put yourself in supportive pockets that will keep you on track, help motivate you, inspire you to hold that grander vision of where you see yourself going and not doubt it, believe it's available for you. And yes, it does mean spending time on visibility, creating connection and less time on procrastination habits that our ego says, but this is productive, you need to do this. Make your sales page perfect, make your logo perfect, fix your website, right? Those things are not as significant at all as the visibility where someone gets to feel the essence of who you are. So we're going to shift into priority three, energetic lead up to launch. So when I say launch, think of the launch as the moment you make an announcement, notify the world, you have this offer and you are accepting clients. Here it is, world, my baby's ready to go. So where a launch falls flat is we think the launch starts upon the announcement and then we promote it. The launch, for the launch to be successful and not drain you because you're talking about it so much, We want to ensure the adequate energetic lead up happened before the, before the launch. That's why this is the reverse sales funnel. It's like, you already have a sense of who's coming in before it's announced publicly. And I I often teach my client, well, I teach my clients in CLR. This is about this wave metaphor, a wave. Think of the energy a wave brings crashing to the shoreline. If the wave starts in the middle of the ocean, man, that's a powerful gust against the shoreline. It's like, bang. It, it, it has this crescendo, it brings the climax. So what if the wave started just a meter or two out? Ooh, that wave is going to be, you know, and it's not going to be as big as a climax. It's not going to be as powerful. So this energetic lead up is you taking your cold audience who might not even know of you or barely knows of you, and you're warming them up. So by the time the wave hits the shoreline and you make the announcement, that you have this offer open, they're now ready to transition to being hot and ready to go. So I'm going to explain more details of how to do that shortly. So when when we're talking about avoiding self-obsession, part of this energetic lead up is knowing your social media is not just about you. It's not called the Christine show. It's, it's social media. So it's about building real relationships ask yourself in your energetic lead up, like you'll sense, am I ready to be launching this? Like you'll feel it. Do you feel connected to your community? Do you have a sense of top prospects even before you launch? And there's ways you can have a greater sense of this for sure. And I think, okay, I I went into a dip in my business in 2019. It's like the old way wasn't working as good as it used to. And it was just like, it, just, it felt like failure after failure, even though, you know, I still had a good year. It, it actually felt quite difficult that year. And I realized as I went into 2020, I need to take my focus off me, 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 and put it back onto other, others, put it back into my community. And I really started focusing on building community, focusing on what other women were doing in my community, you know? So Creating a formal launch and enrollment period, it's what brings you freedom from being visible all the time because you can look into your calendar and say, okay, I'm going to launch this September 1st. Okay, so what am I doing the weeks leading up to September 1st? Ooh, I'm turning on the gas that period. I'm not turning on the gas effective September 1st. That's, that's a telltale situation for a flop, 
for a flop launch because people can feel, whoa, Christine's visible a lot, kind of out of the blue after not being visible, connecting with her community at all for months. And now here she is, but she seems to be really just kind of out of the blue now, like pushing this offer. They'll feel that. And that feels kind of like a using energy. Like I'm using you, my community to market to when I need something from you. There isn't reciprocity. There isn't reciprocity energy with that. Reciprocity feels like, wow, I've been gaining value from how this person's been showing up, sharing, leading. I, I get a better sense of her as of the last while. And now that she's transitioning to selling something, it doesn't actually feel out of the blue. It actually just feels like a normal transition. And I'm ready to rock. I'm ready to buy. Or I'm not ready to buy. Maybe next time I'm ready to buy. So Another thing we want to keep in mind in this lead up to launch is avoid wasting your, your uh, this should say precious energy on an overbaked audience. Some of you have been in a training before where I talked about overbaked audience. So an overbaked audience is a group of people who've heard about your offer, your thing, whatever it is. They, they've seen you a lot of times doing your visibility and they already went through a phase of reaching the pinnacle of their bell curve and the pinnacle of their bell curve, which is the most likely time that they're going to invest in you. It's already gone away, which means their interest in pulling the trigger is already on the descent. So now when they see you showing up, sharing and da, 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 they're unlikely to take action. So what helps you avoid an overbaked audience or feeling like old news. I know those terms sound kind of harsh, but it, it's, it's actually starting to work with the concept of time sensitive events and trainings where you're not available willy nilly all day, every day, giving your advice, giving your advice, giving your live streams, giving your live streams. You actually honor that what you have is valuable and it's going to be available for this period of time. So I'll walk some of my private clients through doing like a temporary Facebook group versus a year long all the time Facebook group where they facilitate challenges. And there's like an element of engagement and excitement where people are like, oh, this is so fun. I'm experiencing up levels and shifts and changes. And it's because it's time sensitive. It's, it's not always available. I'll support my clients build out their own masterclass trainings. You guys are in a masterclass right now where they get their community to learn something from them, get a sense of them, trust, know, like them at a deeper level and be that much more likely to take the next step. I mean, some of you have been in my, my sales funnels before. I can't see who's all on the call right now, but for those of you who've been in it, like my, my biggest launches are, are conscious leadership rising. And, and I do my lighthouse leaders and coaches pop-up group. I also do a masterclass in that one. But my launches are also 50K for that one, right? So it's worth the energetic lead up, right? And I see it as not being a sales funnel, but a service funnel, because most people don't become a client. Most people just gain a lot of valuable information and go on their way, right? So there, it's ideal if you can set up in your reverse service funnel, a level of this is not always available willy nilly, right? Inspire your audience to become like community through some sort of experience you're providing, you're hosting, you're facilitating that they can engage, participate, and truly experience a shift and a change because of you. And that is what brings you to be top of mind for the thing. You've been teaching and leading them on the thing all along. Of course, you're, you're the one that's going to be the resonance for them, right? Okay. So Further on to this is like when we're thinking about, okay, well, how do I even get new eyes on me? To, like, so it's not the same overbaked audience. Well, what's fun for you or what can you stretch yourself to do? Is it visibility on Facebook, personal Facebook page versus hiding in a group? Is it podcasts? Is it crafting your own emails going on YouTube? I mean, there's a lot of ways. What works for one doesn't necessarily work for someone else. Um, I, I really do feel that there's a sweet spot when women are inspired to trigger and invest and it's, it's like catching them when they're in the bell curve. And that's where these time sensitive 
trainings or events are really, really helpful. And when I say diversify, when I say there's power in diversifying your marketing to have new eyes learn about you regularly, it doesn't like, again, this, this doesn't mean a lot of content creation all the time. It means just knowing like, when are my enrollment windows? When do I want to, for a few weeks ahead of time, turn on the gas 45 days before I launch? That sounds like a good time to turn on the gas or at least become a bit more visible, right? So can you do paid ads to gain more eyes on you always? Yes, but it's a lot of money, you guys. Um, it, it really is a lot of money. I mean, the, the people who are making that work right now, like to give you some numbers, they're doing hundreds of thousands of dollars a month to really get into the profit zone. I mean, I'm sure it's low, you can have it lower than that, but ah, it just feels heavy Facebook ads, right? At least it does for me. So in any case, the art of transparent selling, let's talk about selling for a moment. So if you're scared to sell and feel guilty and bad, you're going to emit a different energy about it. So right now, right here, decide selling is a part of me serving my purpose. People want what I have to share. It's only going to be beneficial for them. So why not provide them the opportunity to invest in it? You're never taking anyone's money because money like we, we are all, like only ourselves are in charge of how much money we manifest and it can be an infinite amount. So remember that you're not taking something from them. You are providing them something. And there's this energetic exchange through monergy. And the other thing to think about with transparent selling is it won't feel icky, weird or bad if you're really honoring and embodying this concept of being a lighthouse. I mean, this was a huge part of lighthouse leaders and coaches is like, can you be this beacon of light, knowing who you are and what you bring to the table without shrinking yourself down into a flashlight and then running down the shoreline and being like, I can help you. I can help you. And like, that's when the sneaky DMs start happening. Hey, hey, what are you passionate about? You know, it's like, ah, I am going to stand tall and be a lighthouse. Does that make sense? This like flashlight description versus the lighthouse. So when you're selling, understand the price can be indicative of the level of someone's commitment. So sometimes we feel like I'm doing someone a favor if I make it cheaper, if I make it less. But often if you're having your, your offer if you're undercharging for your offer, you're disempowering your clients from growing in a way that that would have been beneficial. Let, let's say you have an offer and you know it's worth $4,000 and you're like, ah, I think I'll, I'll do it for a thousand. Is that really empowering her? Is that empowering you, your business owner? And you also want to think about pricing your offer, not just on the outcome of what she's getting, but what about the cost of an action? What about the, the ripple effect of having this change take place in her life? You know, maybe you're a relationship coach and saving, salvaging her marriage or, or helping her get out of the wrong marriage or a health coach and not getting diabetes or like, I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on. So if you undervalue what you have, you're going to attract mirrors of that with who shows up to work with you. So you can gain freedom and liberation if you can see the value of what you bring to the table and then understand it's a currency. You're going to attract people who mirror seeing the value of what you have, seeing the value of investing in what you have, right? So uh, I want to be mindful of time. So Okay, I will still read this slide. So this is especially pertinent if you if you already have launched your coaching business and maybe you've been selling things around that four or five K range and you're like, ah, can I go more? Will people see the value of it? But here's the thing, raising your prices, it, it does raise the level of commitment of who's coming into work with you because if you spent $2,000 on something or $20,000 on something like I'm asking you guys right now, would you apply yourself differently to it? I know I would. If something is cheap enough, someone may not even ever open it up and start doing it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, ah, whatever. But when they have a certain level of energetic investment, they're like, oh shit, I'm playing with the big kids now. Like I, I really have to be accountable to this, right? So 
give your prospective clients a chance to get resourceful and invest in herself via your offering, right? Ooh, this is where like the soul growth happens because it's like, ah, can I do this? And ah, and, and you can, right? And there's always an energetic match for every price point. That's something cool to anchor in. There's always an energetic match to every price point because you're going to see coaches out there who are $100,000 to work with or $300,000 to work with, a million dollars to work with. So do they really offer something that different? Mm, I probably not. A $300,000 coach to a $50,000 coach, there's probably not a lot of a difference, but what is different is an energetic match. Some people, they're only going to invest in a coach who's 100K. Some people are only going to invest in a coach if they're like a newer coach at 3K, right? There's always an energetic match. So your gifts are coming. Your gifts are coming. So I, okay, so this is where I'm doing the transition, the transition to the micro dose, <laughs> uh, the mushroom micro dose of what the 90 day VIP accelerator is all about. So if you are like, sweet, that training was helpful. Awesome. My job is done for that component. But if you're curious about what the 90 day VIP business accelerator entails, this is what I'm now transitioning to share about. And it's because after learning all those things, even though I'm as transparent as I possibly can, you still may feel uh, overwhelmed as to, well, okay, where do I start right now? And will I be successful? And is it truly realistic that I could create this reality in my future in the next 12 months, right? And so through my journey of, I'm addicted to turning unrealistic ideas into fulfilling career paths. You know, it's almost like my way of being like, ha, watch me, you know, watch me societal norms, I guess you could say. You think Reiki is woo-woo, I'll make a business in it. You think skincare is woo-woo, I'll make a business in it. So I love doing this and I know that it's possible for me and it's possible for everyone. And that's what the 90 day accelerator is all about. It's, it's this, what is this fastest speed? I can learn the things I need to learn to accelerate my business growth. So this is a very intimate group coaching experience for 90 days, May 4th until August 4th. And it's for the woman who's ready to rise up and claim what is inherently hers, to step into the highest vision she holds for herself, unlocking dormant forces, faculties, and talents along the way. So it's for conscious entrepreneurs and coaches who have untapped value that's ready to be shared with the world in a bigger way. Those who desire to build and sell out their coaching offers to the right people, making a positive impact, not doing it just for the money, but doing it because this thing is beckoning them forth and enjoying a stable and prosperous business model. So this experience will empower the women who come in. There's only going to be three to four women who who come in, but it's going to deepen your level of impact and resonance with the right people via your social media presence. You're going to gain clarity and unshakable confidence in how you show up and who you're best suited to support. So I'll get into the, the nitty gritty details here. You're going to be empowered to develop what I call a brand essence that feels authentic, genuine, and magnetic. You're going to sharpen your skill set on how to cultivate the trust no like. You're going to, if you are already established, you're going to learn how to take your current brand and kick it up a notch have that evolution, unleash your boldest work to the world and really meet your edge. When we meet our edge and we move through our edge, we trigger our own evolutionary leaps. I'm going to say evolutionary leaps in consciousness, right? I really think personal development is a marriage of entrepreneurship because one one doesn't happen without the other, right? So this experience will empower you to develop your own signature coaching offer or offers, depending on where you're at. Elevate your current staple offerings if they're established. Create leading edge experiences that set you apart. You are not a dime a dozen coach. This experience will create, we will create your own customized reverse service funnel. So so what works for Sally may not work the same for Susie. So we're going to make sure it feels aligned for you and has the adequate energetic lead up so you can execute your own launch plan for your energy type, right? Step-by-step -step support with, with really setting this up, mapping it out and executing it is absolutely crucial. I can't, I, I think it's the most priceless part of the whole experience 
whole experience because it's like taking you through to the completion. Like here I am, I'm running my sales calls, I'm enrolling my roster, right? So it's also going to be support turning your audience who's watching you into community, into women and men who deeply value your wisdom and can see the value in investing in your offers, right? So you're going to gain the courage to keep taking the most important steps to tip the needle. Not all the steps, not going to happen in 90 days, but the most critical ones. And you're also going to shift and elevate energy dynamics to call forth your people ready to take action. That means what you're going to learn is going to bypass you from doing sales call after sales call after sales call with looky loos who are not ready. You're going to experience a paradigm shift so that your relationship, your perception, how you see money changes so that you can receive at these larger levels. So there's 10 live modules, live trainings. There's a tiny group dynamic. Three to four women max are going to come in. For early birds who enroll before Monday, they get a private one-on-one -on -one deep dive coaching session. Right now, those are sold on my website for $1,000 for one deep dive. You get all the trainings recorded. So if you have to leave partway through the call, you can come back, lifetime access. Uh, you get your own Soul Tribe group on Voxer and on Facebook. I mean, you don't have to use those things, but they're there if you want them. And you do get bonus full access to three of my self-study programs of your choosing. So with the small group dynamic, the reason I cap it, I'm one of the only coaches who truly caps her enrollments because uh, quality diminishes if you're getting too much quantity. How much time does everyone get if 20 women are on a call? How much time does everyone get with their questions if there isn't time for all their questions, right? So basically the structure is I'll teach the first 60 minutes and then the second 60 minutes is for the coaching and the consulting, the support. And by the time it's each woman's turn, they've already gained so much through listening to the other woman's questions. So areas of focus, vision, clarity, confidence building, brand essence and evolution, social media presence, how to master the art of storytelling, really finding your voice, to cultivate trust, no like, you're gonna develop your signature program, your offers. You're going to master your energetic lead up to launch. That's that important phase we talked about. And we're gonna do that by developing your unique reverse service funnel. So you're gonna gain confidence and know how, how to facilitate sales calls. You're gonna learn how to create and you're gonna have the, the know-how wisdom, how to make your application forms how to create your own masterclass training if that's a route that we decide to do for your reverse service funnel. Again, you're in a masterclass right now. You're going to create and learn how to do some sort of time capped challenge to facilitate to your community. I talked about how those can work on Facebook. And you're also going to learn how to create your follow-up campaign. So that's everything that happens from the moment you announce your offer is open until the offer is closed. What are you doing in that, in that, in that sequence? So call dates, Wednesdays, Wednesdays over 90 days, May 4th, 11th, 18th, following Wednesdays off, June 1st, 8th, 15th, 22nd, following Wednesday off, July 6th, 13th, 20th, following Wednesday off. And then for early birds who come into this experience before Monday, they will have access to that private, private deep dive call. I mean, they can take that deep dive call whenever they want to, for that matter. So principle of entrainment, for those of you who are into frequency, you, you, might, you might already know this. When we're working in these pockets of people doing things that we want to do, it's like, ooh, it's almost like we go faster in our speed to get there because it's not just us, the lone ranger. We're around these other people doing pretty bold, courageous things. And we keep on course. We keep on course for our vision. We don't let go of it and think, oh, maybe next year. So if anyone's curious, I do have client results on my website, bodycherish.ca. 
Uh, many dozens of women have been through different coaching containers with me and had tons of success. This particular lady had her first 10K month in a very short period of time. And we honestly just tweak things and set her up on the proper launch plan of a program that was off, that was awesome, but it didn't have the right energetic lead up. So again, the vast majority of coaches don't exceed 20K a year and not because they don't have something good to share and not because they don't have like a heart of gold. It's because they aren't understanding the business ecosystem. Online coaching is still a business, right? And we need to mix the, the structure into things. So you're going to leave with an ignited and inspired new lease on life and business, feeling awakened and 100% capable of your vision. Procrastination and perfectionism is removed. It has to be. We have 90 days and I see you every week. Well, almost every week. You're going to gain confidence in your ability to be an abundant entrepreneur, knowing how to sell with integrity. You're going to feel so good about selling. You're going to be like, I can't believe I was scared of selling before. It feels great. You're going to have a reliable business model that works. You're going to learn essential technical skills. Uh, Pauline, I know we had an intense tech call <laughs> the other day, but there's a lot of things to learn and you will learn that from me. You're going to gain a successful launch plan that leaves you in awe of what you're capable of. And this means you're going to, you're going to Send me a boxer with joy coursing through your veins, being like, I did it, I did it. I signed up this client and I signed up this client and my roster is full. That's what's going to happen. And you, and you know it's only going to be the beginning. So there's a few options. There's procrastination. I know we've all been there, you know, maybe later another time. By the way, ladies, I'm going to tell you the price of this in a moment. Um, and then there's also saying, you know what, I am going to do it. It's just not the right time. I'm going to do it down the road. And then this is for women who are at that point of decision-making. It's like, no, you know what? I'm ready to do this now. It's now or never. I am ready to accelerate my business. So it's like, okay, can I challenge my start, myself to start doing things and taking action in a way that my old identity wouldn't do? Okay. If the answer is yes, I think I want to fucking do this. <laughs> if that feels like, ah, okay, you know what? I, I'm curious. I want to learn more than I have an application form that shares a wackadoodle of details. So I'm just going to press stop sharing here and I'm going to come back and I'm going to find that form and just bear with me two seconds. So this form shares transparently the price. Um, and for those of you who are inspired to check out the form and go through it, I just put it in the chat box. As you go through the questions, you're going to get a sense of like, oh, you know what? I think this is totally for me, or you're going to get a sense, you know what? Maybe this isn't actually the right fit for me, but I think the form will illuminate some of those questions for you. If you are inspired, uh, now I'm going to go back to my presentation and screen share. Bear with me. Okay, so okay. So as, as I mentioned, it's going to be three to four women max, and it's the reason for that is to ensure the highest level of support to feel like you're not forgotten about in a sea of 20 or 30 women. For those of you who know I'm in a, a mastermind, I'm one of 700. It might actually be 800. So this is not a large group container. It's a small group container. And when you see the price point, it's not going to shock your nervous system. The mastermind I'm in, Canadian, is $23,000 or $24,000. And there's seven or 800 women in it. <laughs> it's not like that at all. <laughs> It's a deep dive, hands-on experience. So for those who fill out the form, I'm going to be replying to them tomorrow morning. And I want to invite yourself, like, if this is calling to you and you're like, you know what, I'm going to fucking do this this summer. Get excited. Get excited about a decision. You never want to move into a decision or a possibility or an application thinking like, mm, I don't know. It's like, 
oh, no, you know what? What if this is the most expansive, thrilling decision? So something that's cool, this is being announced publicly next week on Tuesday, but class participants or women who catch the replay who signed up for this, they get $1,445 off in the early bird savings. And the price of what that equals is shared in the farm. <laughs> so some questions I ask women when I'm facilitating a sales call is what does the cost of inaction feel like to you? So for some, it feels like not a big deal because the desire wasn't strong enough. But for others, it's like, no, I don't want to be in the same place in five years. I don't want this to still be a thing on the shelf that I'm not moving forward on. I don't want to work in my corporate job any longer. I don't want to have financial struggle. I want to get out of debt. I want to have a greater level of freedom and sovereignty in my life. And I'm tired of doing everything solo. I'm tired of throwing spaghetti at the wall and hoping it will stick and not being confident with what my next steps are. And I can tell you with certainty, the steps are laid out and you're handheld every step of the way. So the other question is, well, what is my plan? What is my plan if I don't take action? And then sometimes we'll be like, well, I do have a plan. I'm going to do this next week. And this is what I'm launching there. And I'll do this here. And then it's great. But sometimes when we ask ourselves this question, we'll realize, oh, shit, you know what? I don't have a plan. So this won't necessarily move forward for me. So for those of you just meeting me or catching the replay, because again, 24 of you signed up for this is, well, why learn from Christine? Well, I'll tell you this right now, you guys, I am so obsessed with my job. <laughs> I love it. There's no greater thrill I get than watching other women gain success and freedom being entrepreneurs in a way that only they could be. I want to see my clients succeed and I want to have the experience of being by their side through the journey, not just you're, you're one of 50 and I don't know what happens to you. I want to be there every step of the way. So I've given this example before. If I've had sales calls with any of you, I've probably shared this, but this is the reality. I, two years ago, I was pondering buying a used vehicle for 27 K. I'm still driving the same vehicle I drove many years ago because it works just fine. It's a white Hyundai Santa Fe for those of you who are curious. <laughs> In any case, I was pondering getting a new vehicle and it was a used vehicle and I didn't have 27K sitting in the bank. So I contemplated getting a bank loan for it. And then I realized, wow, I almost went into debt to simply just change vehicles to go from A to B. But yet I had initially some resistance putting 28K on the mentor I worked with that year. And, and I just found this was an interesting dichotomy that humans in general will put debt easy on things. But when it comes to something that is so deep and meaningful to the trajectory of our lives and our sense of purpose and our business success and our education, that's where resistance will bubble up like, ah, oh, I can't do something like that. I've never spent money like that on me. And it's like, wait a minute. Have I spent money on a car like that for me or on a vacation like that for me? So it just helped me pivot things into a better perspective and really start seeing investing in myself as not losing something, not something being taken away, but as a way to transport me to a more ideal situation in life, in business and feel supported along the way. If you guys are around my age bracket, I'm an 84 baby. I grew up where it's like, you're supposed to go to university and that's the pinnacle. But in this day and age, specialized education through people doing something very similar to what we do is what expedites things. It's not the generalized business course. So time for your free gifts. You made it this far. So for those who submit their application and are selected into this experience, they will get that bonus deep dive session that is valued at $1,000. So that will be the 11th live training call, but privately for you. And then everyone here gets a $50 gift card to bodycherish.ca simply with the code VIP50. So that is applicable on orders over 135. So it would literally just take... $50 off the order, which is awesome. Almost 
So early bird savings, they expire Monday. And just to wrap it up for you ladies here still alive, and then for those on the replay, this who is it for? Ideally, it's for the spiritually awake woman and entrepreneur who is excited. Like her mindset is, I want my launches to be 20 to 50K. That's who it's best suited for. Can you, let, let's say you haven't even started your coaching business. Well, I'm going to cross that bridge. I'm going to cross that bridge when I see the application forms, because I'm going to make sure who comes in is going to be the right fit for each other. I mean, there's a possibility of doing two mini cohorts, maybe one for brand new coaches and one for established coaches, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Um, this is best suited for women who have so much heart and who have a genuine desire to be a positive change in the world and in the lives of others and in their own life, full sovereignty and liberation. Okay, so this is my last slide. <laughs> I just need some more water. So just to leave you guys, what is the number one regret in life? Is it, I, I wish I didn't do that thing. No, it's never the things we did do. It's always the things we didn't. It's like, I didn't climb Mount Everest. I didn't launch the business. I didn't travel to Africa. So it's like, think about like, if this is a maybe yes to you or a full yes to you, ask yourself, would this be something you would be closing your eyes thinking, fuck, I regret that. And the answer, I think you'll, you, you'll come up with the answer of what feels true for you. And I will assure you the three to four spots will fill fast.